So these two balls basically are the lower and upper limits of the ping pong ball. Next on the list, I want to make sure that the water volume are going to be equal with each other. So in order to do that, let's first do one thing first. I want to tape this to the bottom of this beaker so that we can finally do the experiment the way it was supposed to be. Here's the ping pong ball. Here's a wee bit of tape. Now, I don't have a string connected to the ping pong ball, but hopefully by now we can agree that if I just tape the ping pong ball to the bottom of the bucket, or if I just tie it to the bottom of the bucket, it should yield the same result because it's still submerged fully. I'm just going to tape it. And hope that the tape will stick. Now to reinforce, I'm going to put a little more tape on there. Remember, I'm putting water in there, and this ping pong ball can slip out. So I want to make sure that the tape is nicely done. Great. There it is. I need to also tape this on the bottom for the second experiment. So we'll get to it right now. Now, for each of these buckets, let's add exactly 600 milliliters. I'll put this on the left side, and I'll put the now to be dry bucket, which will hold the steel ball, on the right side. So let's go ahead and try this out. Obviously, with the ping pong ball on the left side, the scale should balance this way. And that's just because it's adding the weight of the bucket plus that of the ping pong ball. Now, can I, assure you, I can assure you that the weight of the buckets are exactly the same. If there's any disadvantage, it's because there's a little crack on this bucket. So if anything, we should expect the scale to go this way. I'll show you that even with this disadvantage of the steel ping pong ball side, sorry, the steel ball side, the scale will still go down this way. Let's go ahead and fill up 600 milliliters both sides. 100 milliliters. Two hundred milliliters. Three hundred milliliters. Four hundred milliliters. Five hundred milliliters. Six hundred milliliters. Okay, let's do the other side. One hundred milliliters. Two hundred milliliters. Three hundred milliliters. Four hundred milliliters. Five hundred milliliters. And six hundred milliliters. 
Okay. As you can still see, the balance scale is leaning to the left as it should be. That's because it's adding the weight of the ping pong ball. If I take out the weight of the ping pong ball, the balance scale should be even, more or less. Well, right now, we kind of might guess that the ping pong ball has a little bit of an advantage because of the full bucket. <laughs> but let me go ahead and try the experiment with the steel ball now. As I enter the steel ball, see what happens. Goes back down to the left. Goes down to the right now. I'm going to repeat this experiment now with a bigger ping pong ball. So excuse me for a moment. There's a wet ping pong ball there. I'm going to dry both of these off. The scale seems to be oscillating equal sides or equal amounts both sides. I'm going to dry both of these so we get a nice accurate 600 milliliters. And now I'm going to take the bigger ping pong ball, giving even more advantage or less advantage, however way you want to think of it, to the ping pong side. And let's see how that works. Ping pong ball, I got to actually, I got to dry it off a bit. Now, let's tape it down. Correct. There we go. Let's put some more tape on there. Not done with it yet. Let's see more tape. Not to mention. When I tied down the first ping pong ball, the tape added a little bit of volume. So things like that would take into account. And this a lot of tape here, it's going to be a lot of tape here. Of course, the volume will probably not be buoyant, so it wouldn't be that bad. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of tape. Hopefully it sticks down. It looks like a spider. So let's go ahead and, oh gosh, it would be great if this thing stuck down. All right. Let's go ahead and do the same experiment. Obviously, it's going to go down to the left because of the weight of the ping pong ball and the tape. Do the same experiment, 600 milliliters, both sides. Here we go. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Now let's go to do the other side. Six. Okay. One. That was a little floppy. Two. Three. Four. Five, maybe one more. Yeah. 
six. Okay, so mind you, <laughs> I have seen that the graduated cylinder or inside the, um, is the beaker? Inside this graduated cylinder that I sometimes feel more or less than 100 milliliters each round. And so I try to make up for it the next round. And so on average, it should be roughly 100 milliliters each. And thus these two should both have a 600 milliliter uh, amount to it. Okay, now as you can see, it's still leaning over to the left as to be expected. Let's go ahead and do the same experiment and see where it goes. Down to the right. Regroup to the left. Went down to the right. This concludes the experiment. Let's have a little fun though. I'm going to add this in there too. Went down to the right. Let's have a little fun. I'm going to add this ping pong ball in here too. Why not? By the way, that one kind of sinks. I don't think it's a good ping pong ball. Down to the right. It appears that even doing a lot of weird stuff to the experiment, it does go down to the right. The steel ball adds the weight to the right side, whereas the ping pong ball adds only its weight to the left side. The whole idea of buoyant force does not make sense here, or actually it doesn't really matter here only because it gets canceled out by Newton's third law. And I could keep on reciting it over and over again, but it'd be easier if you research it on Wikipedia as I want to try to make this video as short as possible. So that concludes the experiment of the odd balance problem. I'll see you later.